Right, so first scene. He's getting wanked up in a car. Right. <laughs> straight, straight in. in yeah. We straight couldn't in. swear on the last one, yeah, so yeah, it's good to know that. Go for that. Right. So, and I, I, I just, there is a question here, it's not just a statement. Um, how important is it, especially in comedy, to just set that tone right from your set and have a scene Absolutely. like that? Absolutely. And yeah, also, yeah. did you have to fight for a scene like that when you're kind of sort of sending the scripts off for approvals? Yeah, totally, because you have to go, honestly, I know this is a weird way of opening. Actually, I've got, got to say, though, the people I've worked with, Sky and the producer and everything, they were like, we get it and we're going to fight, you know, we're going to kind of back you all the way. Um, but yeah, you want to set your stall out. So you want to go, tiny dweeby guy wearing a fleece and, a, and his work tie getting wanked off in the front seat of a, not, of a Kia, or whatever it is. Oh, chef's it, kiss. I think it's, it's one of the greatest openings of any series ever. <laughs> and, and also, it doesn't start visual, it's a noise. Mm. What is that noise? Yeah, yeah. And then you reveal what it is, and you go, oh, of course it's that. And, it, and it's very important, actually, to, to their relationship and to, and to set in the tone. Yeah, yeah. Mm. How did you guys come to know each other? Did you sort of, did you know each other pre this project? Or yeah, we worked of? together on an episode Plebs. of Plebs, oh, yeah. and uh, we were in Bulgaria, and so... He, listen, so me and the other guy, the other cast members on Plebs, it was me, Tom Rosenthal, and Joel Fry. Right? And we decided to do this game of, we were going to play Do You Dare Do What Danny Dyer Does Do. So whatever Danny does, we were going to match it, right? And he balls in, fresh off the plane, we're at this, outside this hotel in Bulgaria, balls in, and within seconds, he's like, limoncello's all round. This woman appears with like a tray of limoncellos. Suddenly he's got a cigar and he smoked it, looking me dead in the eye in about like two, two inhales terrifying and I won't tell you the full story but ends that night ended up with me getting a Bell's palsy I don't know if you know what that is but look it up no I do my dad got that oh, yeah. yeah yeah you can get it from I mean it's a good night out yeah Basically, yeah yeah you can get it from falling asleep on a marble floor a marble bathroom floor yeah you're lucky you had marble you know because well a carpet wouldn't have given me the Bell's palsy well, so right, actually, yeah. you know it's off one six, on the, six the other so Danny, when did you get on board then on this on this project? So how early on into the kind of process? Because I'm interested to know about the kind of, because you've got such a distinctive way as a sort of an actor and about the kind of writing process and if you had to match some of the character's sensibilities to, to Well, I think he knew me and I think he'd seen my work before. So he wrote this specifically for me. So if I would have said no in that weird world that I would have said no, then I don't know what he would have done. But I, uh, I, I'm, I'm always, um, I'm, I'm just up for good clever, intelligent pieces of work, and this was one of them. And also show me in, in, in a different kind of light because it sort of starts off maybe uh, uh, a bit obvious Danny Dyer stuff, but actually it soon tails off into this madness. Mm -hmm. And also if you, you know, it, it was a great twist and the roles are reversed. It was a no brainer for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always looking for good stuff. And so it's quite rare that it comes around, I'll be honest, you know, and I've made a lot of shit in my life, you know, and. and you learn from it, you try and move on, but, um, you know, bills need He's to be made paid. 40 some films. 45 films. 45 films. Well, I've been around since 93, you know what I mean? So. Um, I've been around since 1985. I'm, I mean, not acting, no, but exactly. like, you know, it's not like I was I'm working 93. Made no me. films. You know, so, so yeah, it was just a beautiful piece of work. It was a script that I went, oh, I cannot wait to get started on this. It seems like a great fun character to play because he sort of says one of those characters particularly at the beginning he says what he wants he kind of does what he wants but a little bit of all of us wants to be like that but we kind yeah. of don't exercise it was it quite fun and quite cathartic to almost be in a character who, who does have that kind of yeah way no it? I love it. I think that we should all be a little bit more like that you know because that British thing is what we will cue we will do as we're told and you know whereas he goes I'm not having this I, you know I won't be sat here next to a car Z I will move to that table there Whereas, you know, Glenn can be the complete opposite and just yeah. doing as he's told, being a bit of a sheep. Yeah, but so I think we all need a bit more. My about character's that. the repressed, the one who wants to be like normal, suburban, everything nice. Then Lee comes and he's that kind of opposite person. So it's, it's about that friction. Yeah, so do you think they could both do have been a bit more like the other? Yes. Well, yes. But then, yeah, but then, yeah. But then if, uh, if people watch it, they'll, they'll realise how it all sort of interweaves and mm. it's a really clever um, thing. Yeah, Danny, you mentioned about sort of get, get, getting good scripts. I wondered about in regards to when you sort of leave a sort of soap like EastEnders, because obviously when you're doing a soap, it's, it's brilliant. It's sort of it's regular work. It's sort of really popular. But is it quite nice then when that's kind of out of the way? You then got this opportunity where you can start saying yes to stuff again. Because I yeah. guess there is a bit of a there's a period of your career where I guess you're not really able to no, to you're, say well, some no, that's, scripts. That's right. You're crossed off of every casting list. You don't exist anymore as an actor. You know, you're in a soap and it gives you stability and all those things. And I'll be honest, it got me out of a lot of trouble. It was. You know, it's a big platform as well, but you, you can get stuck, you know, and, uh, and and I suppose I was only ever going to do a year and then that year turned into three years and then four and then, 
you start going, well, if I don't leave now, I can't leave. And so it, I got to a stage where I thought, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I know there's, there's still some good work out there for me and I'm sort of looking for, you know, um, something, just, just something slightly different. And, and so, and so, you know, you, you, yeah, it's nice to say yes again and to, and to be in the mix. Again, you're not guaranteed nothing. Yeah. No one owes me a career. I didn't know that he was, you know, sort of beavering away, you know, behind his little, like, you know, like um, Jessica Lansbury, what's her name? Um, Ange that? Angela Lansbury. A bit murder she wrote, you know, ba, ba, ba. with me in mind. Ba, ba, ba. You know, you said it was nice to say yes again. Was it nice to swear again? Because I always think this thing in EastEnders, you know, when people are angry and they and really, like, and they have to go, you, you swine, stupid, yeah. you yeah. idiot. You coward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why everyone's yeah. calling each other a cow on it and yeah. all that, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. yeah but now and again, they'd let you have a bastard and you get really excited about it. What a cheeky bastard. You know, so, no, it was, no, it's great. It's just, just a great character. Uh, and everyone, I was going to ask quickly about because I was doing a good, deep, good southern accent in this as well. Oh, um, are there much, any yeah. words in particular you really stumbled on? Any you really, really enjoyed saying? Um, well, ass. <laughs> yeah. So we were we were getting ready to do the scene at one point, and I'm like, we're lining up because I'm meant to be like ushering at him out, out of my house. I'm telling him to get out, right? So we're lining up, and I'm practicing my lines and my breath. So I'm like, get out of my house, and he goes. Get out of my house. I went, yes. I went get, get out of my house. And he goes, get out of my house. And I'm like, get out of my house. And it's a lot I'm of following that going, ass. It's a lot of pressure doing, practicing your Cockney accent in front of Danny Dyer. It's a lot of pressure. It's like making a cheese sandwich for Gordon Ramsay. Well, I don't know if I have the bollocks to do a Rotherham accent go on. in front of. Go on. Go on, give him a bit. Go on, give him a bit. It's not bad, actually. It's not bad, that, is it? No. Next series. Come on. No, let's not, please. <laughs> really, don't, really. Get my arse clenched. <laughs> you know. All right, on that note, thank you so much, guys. Oh, much appreciated. Cheers, Cheers, dude. Thank you, thank mate. You so thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm really glad so you enjoyed it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys. <laughs> hey, you guys. <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys.